Great day to you, Vanderveer Park United Methodist Church. We thank and praise God for this another day in the land of the living. We thank and praise God for the opportunity to worship, even virtually. Today happens to be the fifth Sunday in the month of May. And we are so grateful that the Lord has allowed us to see another fifth Sunday. As it is the tradition, every fifth Sunday, we allow our young people to lead worship. And this Sunday, we are grateful to have two of our young people lead us in worship and a guest preacher to come and speak to our young people. We are grateful that we are able to be a congregation that knows the value found in our young people. So this morning, let us join together in encouraging, thanking, and praising God for who he has brought to us in our young people. Amen. This is the call to worship. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. church let us pray our father you are so wonderful and we worship you you are the source of a river of love and grace that transforms the world we offer you our young hearts minds and bodies help us to grow in the goodness of your kingdom may we shine out in times of darkness stand safely upon the truth and not be shaken and see your vision for the world and follow you Come use our energy to care for the lost. Come take our creativity to meet with the brokenhearted. Come use our youthfulness to bring joy and peace and your hope to bring light to everyone. Amen. Here are this week's announcements. The Monday Morning Man and Men's Prayer Line will be every Monday at 7 a.m. The call-in number is 605-475-475. 4800. The access code is 103-2590-POUND. 
The Wednesday morning prayer line is every Wednesday at 6.30 a.m. That call-in number is 515-604-9936. The access code is 389-759-POUND. Again, that access code is 389-759-POUND. If you need support with early voting this primary season, please contact the church office. Our Campaign of Hope Adopt an Envelope campaign continues. We're so grateful to those who have donated to the campaign. Your faithful giving has gotten us off to a fantastic start. We have five weeks left in the campaign and need a minimum of $3,750 donated every week to reach our goal. Remember, you don't have to do it alone. You can gather donations from a group of friends or family members. Won't you please take a moment and send your donation in now so that we can keep the momentum going and reach our goal by June 30th. You can donate electronically via our website, our app, or you may mail your donation to the church at Vanderveer Park UMC, 3114 Glenwood Road. Brooklyn, New York, 11210. Please remember to put Campaign of Hope in the memo line. Thank you and God bless. As of June 1st, our text to give number will change. The new number is 833-716-3404. Again, Our text to give number will be changing and that number as of June 1st will be 833-716-3404. Male volunteers are needed desperately so that we can assist in picking up the food packages for distribution. The pickups usually take place on Friday mornings. If God is laying it on your heart to serve in this vital ministry, please contact the church office and leave your name and contact information with the administrative assistant. Please remember to include those on our sick and shut-in list in your prayers. Those on the list are Charles Attiles, Theomanda Boyce, Vivine Brewster, Wilbert Christie, Ina Cross, Kathleen Dash, Lynette Douglas, Lenore Flavini, Marlene Griffith, Daphne Haynes, Leonie Hope, Teresa Joseph, Polly Juner, Norma Lee, Beryl London, Keith Mahoney, Alva Morgan, Phyllis Pinnock, Phyllis Rance, Hilda Seeley, Shirley Seeley, Claudette Silvera, Ruby Watson, and Yvonne Young. All announcements will be sent via email. If you are not receiving our emails, please contact the church office to update your contact information. Thank you. Good morning, church. Blessed Sunday. My name is Ashley Phillip, and I want to share the effect COVID-19 has had on my learning. COVID-19, to say the least, has changed our sense of normal. Because cities have been on lockdown, people have relied on electronic technology a lot more. Students, like me, have had to attend school and complete homework online. There are many positive impacts of online learning, one being the ability to have all study materials at our fingertips. However, online learning can bring on negative impacts. For example, if the internet isn't working as it should be, that could cause problems for a student, meaning they'd be unable to complete the day's work. Subsequently, COVID has changed social and academic life as we know it. Despite this, I have learned to have faith in God. I believe he will guide me through any difficulties and help me succeed. As Psalm 62, 1, 2 says, I wait quietly before God, for my victory comes from him. 
He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will never be shaken. Amen. It's giving time, church. Won't you join me for our giving affirmation? I am a benevolent believer. Therefore, I am a grateful and cheerful giver. I sow into this church because I believe in the vision and ministry of this church. Because I am a tither, I am not a beggar or a borrower, but a lender. I expect the windows of heaven to pour out blessings too big for me to contain and God will rebuke the vow for my sake. Therefore, I will share my blessings with my family, my neighbors, and the world. Good morning, church. This scripture reading is taken from Romans chapter 12, verse two. The scripture reads, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen.
Vanderveer Park, I have the esteemed honor and privilege to introduce to you a young woman who has become a sister and a friend. I met our guest preacher several years ago when we were new members at the Antioch Baptist Church of Corona. And who would know that in a few short years, we would become sisters in ministry. We both accepted our call to ministry, and she likes to call me her little big sister because she is older than me, but she's littler than me. And so uh, she calls me her little big sister in ministry. I am honored to have that title as we work together in youth ministry. Uh, this youth minister has, she was first a children's minister, and I remember the days when she had her clown ministry. Yes, she would dress up as a clown and minister to the children. But as I was moving, the Lord was moving for, on her behalf and moved me out the way that she would be able to soar and her wings would be able to grow. While she was afraid and nervous, Minister Andrea Taylor seized the opportunity to grow and become who God would want her to be. Today, she continues to serve as the Minister of Youth at the Antioch Baptist Church of Corona, Queens. She is beloved friend, a beloved sister, and today she is our preacher. I ask that you would pray with her and for her as she prepares to bring the word of God for our young people. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Greetings to this, the Vanderbilt Park United Methodist Church. I bring you greetings from the Antioch Baptist Church of Corona, where the Reverend Dr. Marvin J. Bentley is my pastor, and the Reverend Dr. Patricia Hagler is my assistant pastor. Greetings to your pastor, Reverend Lyons, and to the assistant pastor, my dear sister and friend, Reverend Dr. Keisha J. Agard. Thank you for this extended invitation to join the youth on Youth Sunday for your awesome worship experience. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity to bring God's word and for the invitation. And I pray God's blessings upon this house of worship. Please join me in a word of prayer. Most gracious and everlasting Father, we give your name glory, honor, and praise for all of the wonderful things you have done. We thank you for this worship experience, this opportunity to come before your throne and come before your presence with singing and thanksgiving. And now, God, the preaching hour has come upon us, and I ask, God, that you would use me, that you would anoint me, that you would allow me to decrease, and your word, your will, and your way will increase. And now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. I'm excited to be here. Thank you, Dr. Agar, for that amazing and wonderful introduction. I was looking around trying to figure out who was she talking about, but I'm so glad that she's talking about me. So I thank God for our friendship and our sistership, and I just thank God for Dr. Lyons for allowing me to come and celebrate with you young people on your Youth Sunday. Well, I'm here just to give you a brief word because I know many of you have been on Zoom and you've been doing remote learning and you're like, here we go at worship once more. And here we are in worship. And I'm excited about this word that God has given unto me and I pray that you would be excited as well. Simply put, if I had to give a title to this, if I had to give a theme, I would simply say, he's changing my story, give him the pen back. Just in case you missed it, he's changing my story. Give him the pen back. You've heard the scripture reading Romans chapter 12, verse 2 by Brother Jamal. And so I just want to reiterate the scripture. He read the King James Version, and I'm going to reread that because for the elders, this is something that we are familiar with. And it simply says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For the elder saints, we know what that means. That simply means you don't have to follow what the world does. We should stand up, stand out, and stand apart. Young people, let me break it down to you in the New Living Translation, and it simply says this. 
Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into the new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So what does all of this mean? It just simply means be you in the Lord. You don't have to be like everybody else. You don't have to be what we used to say growing up, be like Mike. Be who you are, who God has ordained and called you to be. And so when I came up with this sermon title, he's changing my story, give him the pen back. It made me reflect on the youth day that I celebrated with my young people. Shout out to A-Town, Antioch Baptist Church. And so their theme was simply, he is changing my story. And so I added give the pen back because when we think of stories, we think of authors. So I just want to name a few and perhaps you're watching and maybe these are your favorite authors if it is put it in the comments section of Zoom or Facebook or wherever you are viewing from. So for the children, you might know Dr. Seuss. For the, uh, uh, for the young people, you might know T.K. Rowling's. For Jackie Collins, that's for us old romantics. Maybe you know V.C. Andrews because she wrote all of these suspense stories. And for those who are African-American buffs in history, Sister Toni Morrison, Brother Claude McKay, poet Phyllis Wheatley. Maybe you also think of Stephen King, and for those of us who are growing up in my generation, Judy Bloom. What do they all have in common? They're all authors. And so when I thought about the scripture and I thought about this sermon title, he's changing my story, give him the pen back, I want to make one statement, and I'm hoping that you can follow along with me. Simply this, everyone is a book. Think about that. Everyone is a book. You know why? Because we all have stories. We all have a story. Our life is about stories going on day to day. And guess what? Now, if we all have a story and we all are books, then guess what the church is? You're right, a library. And I know you're like, where is she going? Send her back to Queens. But I'm gonna make it real clear to you. We all have stories, everyone is a book, and we come to church and the church is like a library. So maybe you've heard before that the church is like a hospital or a place for sinners. Well, guess what? The church is a place for books. And guess what? God is the author, the writer of the books, the writer of our lives. Jesus is the editor. He's the one who rewrites the books and our stories. And of course, the Holy Spirit is the librarian. That's the keeper of the books, the one who teaches us and helps us to remember all of the stories. Now, I was told throughout your youth season, you were studying parables. And everybody knows a parable is simply a story that has a practical and everyday meaning, but Jesus spins it into a spiritual one. And so guess what? You are a book, I am a book. And God is our author, Jesus again is our editor, and the Holy Spirit is the librarian. And because the church is the library, guess what? We are now a bookmobile. Any of you know what a bookmobile is? Yes, bookmobile is simply a library that comes and goes to different locations. It's something that transports the books. And because we are not actually sitting in the sanctuary, the church is still a bookmobile. We still can tell our stories. We can still tell our testimonies. We can still tell of the goodness of the Lord. You are a book. And guess what? Just in case you're trying to figure out, my pastor, when he preaches, he usually says, put a pen in it. And that's simply a thought about what he's spoken about. And he comes back and he ties it in and he takes his pen back. And so that's where I got, 
give God the pen back because in our lives, God has a plan and a purpose for us. And every now and again, we want to do our own thing and we want to write our own stories. And now we have to give the pen back so that the author can change our lives, make our lives better, do some revisions. Are you following me? Are you getting me? Is it clear? So, when I thought about it, I'm like, okay, so if we're books, that means every day of our life, there's a page. Every day, there's a page. Every time you wake up in the morning, that's a new page. This is an opportunity for God to write your story, to continue your story. And so I bring this to the scripture because our scripture talks about not being conformed to the world. You know what the world is. The world is not just the outside space. It's but the things, the music, the people, the thoughts, the concepts that influence our life. And so the scripture, Paul is writing to the church of Romans to say, hey, I know you're around other groups of people, and I know that they're doing this over there, and they're worshiping here, and they're doing this there, but you are not to be like that. And I know it's a little challenging to be conformed, to not conform to everybody, especially when it seems popular, especially when it seems like this is the end thing to do. But he goes on and he says that you have to renew your mind. And so in order for us to be renewed, I believe that we have to give God that pen back so that he can write new chapters of our lives. Now, what happened on chapter 2 and chapter 3, we're now moving to chapter 4 and chapter 5. There's some things you might not be able to change in chapter 2 or chapter 3, but as God is giving you the opportunity and you have given him that pin back, he now can change your story. So I said everybody was a book, and I just want to find out, well, if we're all books and there are different types of books, what kind of books are we? You might want to know, well, what kind of book am I? I've come to help you out. Here we go. So if this is your book, if you're viewing, I want you to type in, I am this, whatever I'm getting ready to tell you, so get ready. So my first book is, are you a fiction book? Are you a fiction book? Is your life made up, elaborated, embellished? I know that's a big word. That means you are fronting on Facebook, IG, Snapchat, TikTok. Are you fiction? Is that the real you that people see? Is things a little bit extended or stretched. The truth is a little bit beyond. So you say that you are six feet, but you're really only five, two. Like, I mean, those type of things. What is, what's the fiction? Are you a fiction book? Are there lies that you're saying and telling people so that you can sound and look better because you're not feeling comfortable and confident in your own skin? Maybe you are a fiction book. Well, okay, so you're not fiction. What about a picture book? Are you a picture book? Picture book is simply a, a book that has no words that fully express your life. You can't even comprehend, you can't even put into words what's happening in your life. And perhaps you allow people to draw conclusions about what they see and what they think about you. Picture book. Oh, maybe you might be a mystery. You have absolutely no clue as to what's going on in your life. There's things that's happening and it doesn't make sense and you're trying to find out and you have all of these questions, but your story is a little unknown. You're still trying to identify gender and, and you're trying to identify where do you go in school and who do you become and when I'm with one group, I have to be this way or do I have to be that way? Maybe. You have no idea where you are going, what you are doing, or even where God is taking you and what he's doing in your life. Or maybe you might be a self-help book. You want to improve. You know you messed up. You see, you struggle with all of these issues that people says your attitude might not be right, or maybe you, you have a, a, just a tone about you. You're trying to do better. On your own, you're trying to be the doctor and you're trying to make yourself better and you're self-medicating. And so sometimes self-medication is finding things that make us feel better, but they're not necessarily really good for us. 
So maybe you're self-medicating in pity and despair or depression, just feeling down. Maybe you're trying to understand yourself and you're not really even sure who you are, but you're trying to do it on your own. Or perhaps you might be a comic book. You just take life as a joke, even as a young person. Everything is silly, everything is funny, nothing is serious. This pandemic is not serious, this remote learning is not serious. Maybe you are just trying to find funny things so that you don't have to deal with the real things that's happening in your life. Or lastly, you might even be a horror story. Maybe there is some darkness, some sorrow, some struggle, some fear, some anxiety. Maybe you're dealing with low self-esteem. Maybe you're dealing with bullying. Maybe you're dealing with violence in your home. There's some horrible things that's happening to you and around you. Well, I just gave you a few types of books, but maybe you're none of those books. Maybe you're none of those things that I mentioned. And you might simply be an open book. You go to school, you already know. Open book test when the teacher allows you to have the book open and she gives or he gives you a test. And guess what? The answers are right in front of you, but you still can't find it. And I often found that open book tests were a little bit more harder than the ones where I didn't have a book. And so that's life sometimes. The answers are right in front of you. The answers are right in front of you, but you still struggle. You can't make sense of it. You can't understand what's happening, okay? And so this might be your story because God has been giving you the answers. God has placed your teachers and your pastors and, and your youth leaders and your parents and your big brothers or your sisters, your mentors. Those are the people that can give you solid answers and you refuse to accept what they give. You're on the wrong page. And so perhaps you are that book that's at the top of the library shelf. You might even feel like somebody forgot about you, that you're not worth anybody's attention. But I will tell you this, to God, you are top shelf, but not hidden away, not dusty, not forgotten. You are front and center in God's mind and heart. So I told you before that we all are books and that the church is a library. If I can, let me just give you briefly what the definition, this is official definition of what a library is. In the Librarian's Book of Lists, it simply says, a library is a collection of resources in a variety of formats that is organized by information, professionals, or other experts who provide convenient physical, digital, digital bibliogra bibliographic, or intellectual access and offer targeted services and programs with the mission of educating, informing, or entertaining a variety of audiences and the goal of stimulating individual learning and advancing society as a whole. In a nutshell, what this is saying is it allows a, a person to walk in and find information. When you return back to church, you will walk in and find your Sunday school lessons ready. You will find your teachers ready. You will find your pastors and your spiritual leaders ready to give you information about God. And in addition, there's different ways through serving, through ministries, through your youth ministry, maybe through the choir, maybe as an usher. There's different ways that you can build up the library called Vanderveer. Vanderveer. And so in addition to that, it also says that as a whole, the society grows. That's what the congregation is. We all come together to fellowship because we can learn from one another, right? Just because the older people have been going to church longer doesn't mean that as a young person, you don't know God and you don't have a relationship with God. Your walk and your relationship is just as important as the next person, just as important as the pastor and the the assistant pastors and your parents never ever let anybody discredit who you are because your story matters 
So when I'm thinking about Paul and he's talking to the church at Romans, at Rome and he's telling them, don't copy the behavior of your friends, I want to say that to you. As the school year has ended, you're going on summer vacation. Many of you will be returning back to school in person. I know you haven't seen your friends in a while and you're going to be excited about it and there's going to be a lot of catching up to do. I just want you to be mindful of who you are in Christ. Remember who you are. So when everybody else is going against what your Bible has told you by your reading, what you've heard in church, Anything that looks opposite to what Jesus Christ is and who he says he is and what he can do, you need to leave that alone. So, as I was sharing, when I looked at the words conformed and transformed, conform is simply, in Hebrew, it means to be um, an, an enemy of. And so, we can become enemies of God when we conform to the world. And if you're like me, I don't want to be an enemy of God. I want to be in right standing. I want God to continue to bless me and bless my family and bless my church. So I don't want to be his enemy. So that's why I'd rather be transformed, which means to change, to become better, to have structure. And that change starts in our mind. So again, I'm getting ready to close. I just want to remind us again that we are the library. And just like books in a library, books are borrowed, right? You can take the book out for a little bit of time, but at some point, you have to return that book. Now, if we are books and we are in the library and God is the author and Jesus is the editor and the Holy Spirit is the librarian, at some time, we have to go back to the author. We have to go back to the librarian. And so keep this in mind, as young people, COVID-19 has shown us all that anybody can go, anybody can die, anybody can leave us. Never ever think because you're young that you might not be able to go home to the Lord, okay? God is not a respecter of person. And I say this because I know it sounds a little scary, but this is the reality that we're dealing with. Every single person, is on borrowed time, meaning that there's no time at any given point that we know that God will call us to our heavenly place, that heavenly bookshelf, right? So while we're here on earth, while we're here in this library, this earthly library, I want to challenge you to take this serious, to take your life serious, take this journey, this faith walk serious. Okay, because there's going to be a time where you're going to have to go in person to the library, to the librarian. And so I want you to be mindful that when books are not returned on time, there's a, fi a fine or a penalty that's paid. And when we don't give our lives to Jesus Christ, there is a penalty. Do you know what that penalty is? That penalty is death. That penalty is living a life in torment and tor turmoil eternally in hell. And I know, oh my gosh, she said that word. Yes, I said it because it's real. And we have to be honest with ourselves. So we need to be clear that you are on borrowed time and the penalty is that you won't have the opportunity to live in heaven eternally on a heavenly bookshelf with God the Father, Jesus Christ, his Son, and the Holy Spirit. But I will tell you this, there is one way to make sure you gain a spot in that heavenly library, and that's by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and Redeemer, making him the head of your life, choosing to follow Jesus Christ. You're going to find, you're going to want to take that book out all of the time. The stories, the adventures, the things that you're going to see, the places you're going to go, the people you're going to need, meet because you are saved and because you are a Christian, it's going to be exciting. You won't even have to leave your house, how exciting your life becomes. But I want to encourage you and I want to invite you. Accept the invitation. Accept the library card that God has given to you through Jesus Christ. Check yes. Say yes. And guess what? I said 
Our theme is, he's changing my story, give him the pen back. When you say yes to Jesus Christ, you actually have given the pen back. And you've allowed God to say, you know what? This is my child. And I know things might have been bad for him or her a little while ago, but I want things to be better. And she did the right thing. He did the right thing by saying yes to my son, Jesus. And so what I want to tell you is, just like books, pages sometimes get worn, sometimes they get a torn and a little gray, and things happen. And even when you become saved, and even when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it doesn't mean that everything is going to be amazingly wonderful and perfect. There's going to be some chapters in your life that's really difficult. But I'm telling you, when you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, even the most difficult chapters, you turn the page, there's something waiting for you. So I want to encourage you. I want to invite you. I want to remind you that you are an audio book, that your voice matters. I know sometimes people don't want to hear you. They don't want to hear your opinion. But God always wants to hear you. And the best way you can be an audio book is by talking to God, by praying to him. Not only when you get in trouble, but just to say, God, thank you for waking me up. Now you are an audio book. God, thank you for keeping me safe. Now you are an audio book. God, thank you for blessing my mother and my father, my family. Thank you. You are now an audio book. And as an audio book, it's simply back in the day, we used to just say testimony. Every time you speak about what God has done in your life, you now have a story to share with the world. And the world is waiting to hear your voice. And guess what? Even those who may not want to hear your special story, it's okay. Because when you share it, somebody is going to be encouraged. One of your friends may have gone through a really hard and difficult time, but when you tell them about Jesus, and when you tell them how you made it, how you passed your classes, even though you are going to school remotely, those of you who are graduating and going to college, you, people thought that you wouldn't do it. And now here it is, you are college, um, you're college bound. So many things that can take place. So, I'm about done. I just wanna give you some takeaways. You are a story. Your story is being written every single day you wake up. You have the opportunity and the decision to surrender the pen and allow God to lead you in the way that he wants. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and to give you hope, not to harm you and to give, um, give you a future. Your future is found when you give the pen back. God bless you, young people. God bless you, Vanderveer. God bless each and every person. And remember, you are a book, and your story is worth reading. God bless you. And now let us receive our benediction. And now, God, we say thank you for what eyes have seen, for what ears have heard, what hearts have felt. Thank you, O oh God, for writing our books. Thank you for reminding us that our story is not over because we've given you back the pen. Now, O oh God, bless us as we depart from this worship experience, but never your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.